Here we go guys, a whole pile of brand new engine parts we got for X231. Um, what is not new on this bench uh, happens to be old engine parts that came out of X231. We have some ZB stuff here, there's some 10X stuff here, there's even some 10A production stuff here. So uh, some of these pieces are about to go out to the machine shop for some reconditioning. So as long as I still had everything here in one spot, I wanted to uh, get it on YouTube. We'll uh, take a look at some casting numbers, we'll take a look at some uh, some unique features, um, and even some plain Jane standard features that are on some of these pieces. So let's get into it. So we'll start by looking at the crankshaft. This uh, shaft in the foreground is out of X231, the prototype. The uh, crankshaft back here is one out of a production 445 tractor just uh, set out here for comparison. Now dimensionally, both these crankshafts are essentially the same. They both have the spiraled oil return groove on the rear flange. They both use the same felt rear main seal. Like I said, they're laid out the same. They share the same 30 tooth front timing gear, commonly found that, well, what you'd find in any ZB or 445. Um, their main difference is the prototype crankshaft has a casting number of RE370. Now my ZB parts manual shows a part number of RE5370 for the crankshaft. Now I don't know what the casting numbers on the ZB cranks ended up being. I don't have enough background knowledge of the ZBs, but the 445 production crankshaft shows a 10A6032 casting number, which is a common part number 10A prefix that you'd find on any production 445 Moline. Um, Basically, we're going to just do a 20 under grind on the journals of the crankshaft that came out of the, uh, the prototype. It does not appear that this crank has been ground yet, so we're going to get by with 20, 20 under just fine. We got the new rod bearings, the new uh, main bearings here. That should get us all fixed up. Uh, the last curiosity with this, uh, with this crank out of the prototype is if you look behind the front timing gear, you can kind of see some weld that's been added, like they've kind of built up that shoulder a bit where the uh, the front gear presses on. And you don't see anything like that on the, on the production crank. It's just all clean machining. So one main difference between this crankshaft and one that you would find in a ZB was uh, a ZB did not have an insert type front bearing. They actually used a ball bearing on the front end. And it does not look like a ZB production crank had this long of a uh, journal on the front end in front of that gear. So uh, just to kind of, you know, a few minor differences between the prototype crank and the production, but for the most part, things are pretty much like you'd find in a 445. So next we have the pistons and rods. These four that you see in front of you with the pistons detached are out of X231. Uh, they came out of the prototype engine. And there's really nothing special about them. They look like ZB rods, going by the number that's on them. They each have an RE307 casting number. Uh, this engine had the original cast iron pistons in it yet. Standard bore. Uh, it's the 3 and 5 8 standard bore that you would find in any ZB or 445. Um, we did decide to go with replacement pistons. And of course, you can only get the aluminum ones now, but that's really no big deal. So we have... Four new pistons, all 20 thousandths oversize. Um, we did get new uh, wrist pin bushings. We're going to have those put in and size to the new wrist pins as long as we're at it. And of course, just for comparison's sake, I have this piston and rod out of a 445 production tractor engine. It's just an old used one, but really dimensionally, it, everything's the same here. Between ZB production 445, they just used some ZB parts in this prototype. And of course, the 445 rod is going to have the 10A number. This is a 10A6595. Just to show you that that is of production 445 vintage. And basically in this engine, they just use some ZB parts. Next up is the cylinders. These two cylinder sets here are from X231. And you can see it looks like they carried the 10X casting number at one point, although when these plugs were put in, it destroyed most of it. But you can see a 10, and it looks like two legs of an X sticking out from under the plug, and perhaps ending with a 04. Same with this one, it looks like a 10, two small legs of an X, and another 04. 
Um, I have this production 445 cylinder set here on the end with the 10A number, um, pretty much just for comparison's sake. Any one of these jugs would be interchangeable with the other two. Uh, there really are no dimensional differences between these. Uh, like I said, just some appearance. Um, like even this uh, front 10X head had a couple plugs in the upper water jacket where the other one did not. But then this one has quite a large raised cast boss around the uh, water jacket drain tap and this one did not. Um, the other real difference between these and the production cylinder set is the production set has a lot more material on these outer corners and you look at the uh, 10X ones and they are quite a bit thinner so other than those minor differences there's uh, they're really all pretty much the same. Okay guys last up we got the cylinder heads. Um, really nothing special about these they're just standard 10A part number heads. They are not the original ones to X231 but they are the ones that were on that tractor ever since before we had it so Unfortunately, what the original cylinder heads were is one of those mysteries of history at this point since they're long gone. So the plan as of now is just to uh, go ahead and use these. We're going to get them put back on the machine. We're going to uh, send them out to the machine shop. You can see I've already pressed out all the old valve guides. The old guides were getting pretty worn. We're going to have these tested for cracks if they check out. We're then going to have the head gasket surfaces planed, at which point we'll get them back here. We got some new valve guides to press in. We'll get that done. We'll end up uh, refreshing all the valve seats ourselves. We got brand new valves to put back in them, and we'll go ahead and get these assembled and uh, have them ready to go back on the engine. So that really uh, brings us up to date with everything that's been going on here. Uh, guys, keep watching for more videos. Anytime I get something done that's worth talking about, you'll see me back here. So as always, thanks for watching, and uh, you guys uh, see you next time.